Hey, what's up guys? Bim Pure coming at you with another one of these videos. We're going to be playing Balance Hero Survival. This is another map of the kind of tournament pool that we have going. Work at 3 Champions Cup coming your way this October, the 30th of October to be a little bit more specific. Um, we are going to be competing in this map, which was made by Overclocked. Big shout out to the guy, makes a perfectly balanced map. I love his map. So, we obviously decided to include it in the tournament pool. So, I feel like it's going to be pretty fun. I think it was Burlang's pick. So, I'm excited to see how we go about this map. So, let's talk a little bit more about the map itself. If you guys are interested to learn a little bit more about the tournament, links will be down in the description for you guys. Anyways. So we started off with a summoner build. Summoner builds are kind of meta at the moment, guys. So pretty much what you want to do, uh, at least what I like to do, is start out with a very specific trait. You either have the choice to go for the uh, summoning portal, or uh, the Tome of Power, or the Grimoire of Soul. I hope I pronounced that correctly. But essentially what the Grimoire of Souls does, it halves your stats, but also gives you scaling HP and mana. Which usually is pretty good to get. I feel like it's a pretty good pick to go for. Uh, just because um, summoners do lack that survivability aspect in the late game. So I feel like getting scaling, health and mana is pretty strong. Just because it, it will be very useful for um, your kind of like mana expenses. Um, for summoning units and also like uh, survivability with a lot of health. And kind of soaking up that damage. So... Um, the thing is, we are pretty much investing a lot into, uh, I guess, scaling into the game. So, um, early on, we are going to be struggling a lot. As you guys will see, the first two rounds, I am struggling so much. It's so tough, man. I can't even... I don't have enough mana to cast spells. I literally cannot kill these units. Look at my stats. They're so freaking bad. It's absurd. So, yeah, I don't know. Er, first early two rounds, man, I have struggled so much. So, you just need to, like, kind of, like, pray that, you know, later on, you're going to be, uh surviving a little bit better so i mean that's pretty much it so i mean picks at the moment are either like uh casters or summoners are pretty strong tanks are also viable but it really kind of depends so i feel like you have to like play the game a lot to kind of understand which abilities are good what combination of items are also strong so i feel like it's all about experience um so early on we did opt for water elementals which was my first role i feel like it was a no-brainer uh, rest of the spells weren't too useful so for what i was going for so i did opt into getting wa water elemental i think it is a pretty good scaling um summon so i feel like it does quite a bit of damage and we can complement it very well with some items that i will kind of like discuss a little bit later all right so i got my second rotation of abilities i was pretty happy about this one so i got fan of nice healing uh, Lava Spawns and Infernal. I, it's literally a no-brainer. You, I could go for Lava Spawns. They're pretty good. Uh, just solid DPS. But I feel like Infernal is a must. Especially for a summoner build. Just because it does chaos damage. And it scales so well. Even though it costs a lot of mana to summon it. But also stuns. So it has a, a layer of CC on top of it. So I feel like uh, Infernal. Even though it costs a little bit more to upgrade. And the mana cost will, you know, is significant. I feel like it's still pretty good to... Uh, obviously get myself Inferno. I even had to sell some of the units to get Pendant of Mana to essentially <laughs> have the enough mana to actually cast the goddamn ability. So it's 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 kind of rough, but I feel like it's 100% worth it. As you will see, it is just so clean. It will help me quite a bit, significant amount to kind of clear the waves. I feel like uh, plus on top of it, I will have the uh, water elemental. So I hope in the future I will be getting more summons. I feel like three summons is the least for a summoner build. You probably want to be getting some um, uh, uh, what's it called, like CC to like really crowd control your uh, your opponents as you kind of fight them. Obviously here like the uh, immolation is so satisfying with the uh, water mental dealing a lot of DPS. But anyways, yeah, so I feel like CC is very important, like anything with like Storm, um, Storm Bolt is very important. Um, you could also go for uh, Acid Bomb, like anything with CC that slows the target down or just net anything. And you also need some sort of mobility with like um, Wind Walk or Blink. Those are, are usually pretty good for casters or summoners. Um, second rotation, we even got Quill Beast. Damn, I was so freaking happy. The only problem is I had this perfect aura. True Shot, which I really wanted to pick, but I can't just because I really need to get those summons. I feel like um, you cannot afford to um, skip you know, if you get summons, just for the single fact that you might not even get them in the future. So I feel like um, once you get summons, you really have to commit to them and just get at least 
minimum three uh, types of different summons and just powered them up as much as you can from the summoning shop. So that's what I pretty much opted for. We have the Quill Beast, Infernals, and Water Elementals. We are set, guys. I'm very happy. And uh, let's see how uh, the rest of the game goes. So for clearing rounds, I pretty much opt for going in a corner, pretty much like dragging all the units in a corner and essentially funneling them into the, like this small area. And when they, once they come uh, really close, I pretty much use the Infernal to do as much DPS and hit as many targets as possible. I feel like that's typically what you want to do because units pretty much typically spawn on these like four waypoints or uh, like corner spawns uh, that are uh, within the platform that you spawn in. So I feel like uh, the best way is to just like go in a corner and try to your best to like um, funnel all the units in one side and do as much DPS. Because the thing is, if you clear among the top three, uh, fast, fastest kind of like uh, clearers, I guess you could call them, um, you get extra gold, which I feel like I was trying to actively go for that. But it is difficult because it's hard to compete versus casters. You also have this scoreboard, which is very nice. It kind of tells you a little bit more information about what your opponents are building. So it's kind of a cheat cheat in, in some way where you could pretty much pay attention to what type of builds everyone is doing. So you could see Zoom is going for a tank caster build. You can see we have another summoner. Uh, we have Red, which is a caster at the moment. We have, uh, well, two summoners when you think about it. We have Orange and Teal that are summoners. So those are all like information, like valuable information that you need to keep track of whenever you're playing the game, just because um, you could pretty much like build or select abilities based on um, your opponents as well, just kind of countering them. So I had this like rotation of ability. One of them was uh, Illune's Grace, if I uh, remember correctly, but it pretty much it reduces incoming magic damage by a certain amount. And I feel like at max level is 30%. And I feel like it was pretty good against um, many of these uh, players obviously versus zoom and like this red guy which obviously they were very two very strong casters with very good abilities so i thought uh to myself that is probably the best option even though i had polymorph the only problem with polymorph which arguably would have been a, probably a better choice is that it costs so much mana and i can't afford to um lose 1.6k uh, mana at max level uh because i need to invest into actually summoning units so I feel like it was a pretty good choice for me to just pick um, Illum's Grace just to reduce magic damage. Plus, it's a, a passive, um, so I have a little bit less abilities to worry about. So I feel like it was a pretty good choice overall. The rest of the abilities weren't really worth it. So item-wise, it really kind of depends on kind of which trait you picked and what kind of like direction you want to really want to go with your build. So for example, drums skills basically uh, the damage that your uh, summon to receive scales based on the current mana that you have and it really complements well with my current um, trait which is the Grimmar of Soul and I'm getting scaling um, intelligence and mana so mana not intelligence sorry I apologize about that but yeah also like getting health and armor on those um, those units so the line horn and the heart is pretty strong because it gives a lot of survivability to your um, actual summons so I feel like that's pretty good for PvP uh, just because your summons are a lot more durable, so you have to consider that in the future. Um, also, you probably want to go for flat damage early, uh, just because with that the horn, which uh, gives you flat 70 damage to all of your um, summons, I feel like it's pretty good to for clearing early waves, but I feel like um, you probably want to transition towards the, um, what's it called, the drums in later stages into the game. Um, you could also go for... Um, the uh, Murloc Scepter or whatever it's called, but essentially it is pretty strong because it summons a um, Murlocs, two Murlocs, and essentially has a passive as well. So every time you ha you summon a, um, you, you cast a, an ability or a summon, it has a chance to uh, double proc or summon a mirror image of that current summon. It does a little bit less damage and has less health, but still pretty good because um, we are summoning a lot throughout battles. So I feel like uh, having that scepter is very valuable. Not only that, but it also has this spell. So I feel like any sort of CC that is upon us, we are able to um, kind of like dispel it. So I feel like it is going to be critical for um, PvPs and like Battle Royale in the future. So I feel like it's definitely a must have. Um, summons are pretty good, uh, but you need some sort of like um, way to get around the map so i feel like people are going to be aiming you because you're uh, essentially you don't need to necessarily aim for the summons whenever you're fighting a summoner you can just pretty much aim for the main character if you take him out then the summons fall as well so having this mobility um in your arsenal of abilities i feel like is very important just because you could get around and get out of sticky situations which could be very um 
valuable in the future. So I did opt for the blink, which obviously scales with, uh, you can increase the, the kind of range at which it, um, you can TP. Cooldowns remains the same if I remember correctly, um, but just the mana cost increases and the range increases, which is pretty good. And finally, our last rotation of ability, we got Devotion, which could have been potentially really good, but the thing is, what's even better is Stormbolt, guys. Stormbolt is just such a clean and final add-on to the uh, arsenal of abilities that we have, essentially just because it will pretty much CC your opponent, so giving our um, summons more time to kind of deal DPS, so I feel like... Reducing their armor with uh, Acid Bomb and on top of it CCing them with Storebolt. I feel like this is just such a clean build at the moment. I'm really liking the build that I have at the moment. The only problem is just early game, it's not enough. Uh, they're not leveled up as much, so they're, they're kind of like use or value is significantly lower. So we are put into this first PvP versus none other this, than Mr. Zoo. By the way, if you guys don't know uh, Zook, he is co-hosting the tournament with me, so I definitely recommend you guys checking this guy out. He streams pretty much daily on Twitch. I'll have his link down in the description. He's an awesome guy. He does uh, pretty much like a lot of like tinkering with all these builds, so I definitely you do recommend. He's been pretty much coaching me throughout this game, so do uh, recommend you go uh, watch the guy out. He also has a YouTube channel. I'll probably link down in the description. Anyways, it was a very tough one because um, he has the Medallion, which is one of the items that will probably be uh, getting a nerf. Uh, essentially, every time he's taking damage, um, he's also getting mana back, as you guys are noticing. So he's able to infinitely cast abilities, and I was trying to like move my water elementals out of the way and try to like uh, keep attacking him because it was my main source of DPS. Uh, but yeah, as you guys noticed, I am running out of mana. So that was definitely pretty much the problem for this build. He even has anti-magic cell in his kit, so... Uh, and pretty much one-shotting my backline with his <laughs> carrion swarm, so I can't really do much about it. Um, it was just like a misuse of my abilities, and I feel like it's very tough for me to like... Um, kill him in a PvP. I feel like I should have definitely built a little bit um, better. A line of Sworn was probably not the best build. Um, and now we just like this guy fully disrespects me by just not moving and just casting his carrion swarm I feel like I should probably report him to blizzard for that type of behavior I feel like that Ooh. was completely naughty and Why you bullying <laughs> should me? get that as soon as possible And it sucks because we lost 900 gold for that win and not only that it's um The problem is that Grimoire souls also applies on freaking um Kills of heroes, so it's 20 times uh, so I would have literally lost 200 HP and 100 mana, which really sucks because um, I could have definitely used the, that extra health and mana. So, I mean, um, next up, next up, I will probably um, build a medallion for the, the uh, kind of PvP. I feel like getting those that extra mana is just so important, especially if you have, if you have like a very summoner and heavy casting build where you have to, you need a lot of freaking mana to suffice all of your expenses. So I feel like um medallion is just so good um for that purpose anyways for boss rounds as you see i'm also very weak um we are pretty much going to try to kill them <laughs> to the best of my ability but as you see um i need really need to kite so these like bosses you'll see um throughout the um uh, like throughout the waves you'll see they have a lot of chaos damage and they i could literally get one shot because i'm very vulnerable i'm only going to power up my summons and not necessarily make myself durable so I really need to watch out for that. You also see me holding a lot of circles of nobility, so essentially giving me uh, 20 plus 20 all stats uh, for each circlet, which I feel like is pretty good, just because it gives you obviously um, strength, so a lot of health, agility, just agility not really useful, it gives you a little bit of armor, I guess you could say. Uh, but the most important thing is intelligence, so giving me a lot of health, a lot of mana regeneration, and just like primary stats, so extra damage. So I feel like overall you're pretty much. Um, they're pretty good, uh, just kind of like uh, placeholders, I guess you could say. Um, so you pretty much like have um, these circulates of nobility early stages of the game for just survivability and uh, just stats are overall pretty good. So you see me getting this Heart of Serenox, I think it's called. Um, no, I think it's not. It's Hazur. Heart of Azun. Essentially, every time you cast um, spells or every fifth cast of um, casting spells, you essentially heal your nearby allies by 40%. So I feel like that's pretty good. Um, it's especially that you see me casting a lot of spells. I feel like healing my summons is strong, but if it's definitely not the best item to get. Um, just because you could replace this with the Heart of Serenox, essentially giving 
your current summons a lot more health. I feel like the flat health early is a lot better um, than the, the healing that you would get. Uh, just for the single fact that units can die um, very fast if they are not um, already super healthy, right? So I feel like uh, getting the flat health early is a lot better. So we are um, in the second trait selection at the moment. We, we do want to be going for the Moonstone. I feel like it's pretty much a no-brainer. You could also opt for the Lifesteal. Both are very good options. Moonstone usually is pretty good because it gives you uh, regeneration based on uh, the current... Uh, or pretty much every time you cast a spell, you get mana regeneration. So I feel like, obviously, since we're casting an absurd amount of abilities, I feel like that's pretty much a no-brainer. So it gives us the ability to just constantly cast abilities and just kind of like uh, kite cast abilities um pretty much let our summons you did our pretty much our work so yeah i feel like that was pretty much a, the best but or trait i could have picked all right so here we go final trait and we decided to pick the reinforced hides the reason being is because we want as much help as possible i don't really care about attack speed just because uh, my character is not going to be going for any sort of attack speed, so the flat 2k health is going to be critical for my survival, just because I'm going to be letting pretty much my summons do dirty uh, work for me. So, there's also a trade that gives your summons more attack speed, if I remember correctly, but I, or more attack damage. Um, but I feel like you're, you're definitely opting for more survivability is so good. So, jumping into the next PvP, it was pretty easy, guys, I'm not going to lie. And it just, I just completely wrecked the guy. It was just too easy, and we got that extra 2... 200 HP from the kill, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's this is the power of summons, guys. Later on, as you see, even Zoom is getting completely annihilated. It's just because there's too many summons, and you get overwhelmed, and that's the problem, right? Even you can see, even see this guy using the key, which summons that you know that curveball, which did a, quite a bit of damage. But I mean, overall, summons are very powerful late game. They're very good scaling, um, like heroes and like kind of. Um, builds but the problem is um there's they, they can be countered they could definitely be countered you'll see that um some of these casters what they could do is essentially um do or have a lot of like aoe spells and they could get lifesteal so for example they could use dps character agility heroes and casters could literally get lifesteal and cast as many abilities on these summons and pretty much um what's it called like a life soul from killing these summons over and over, right? So I feel like there is still potential for you to like counter these summon builds, but it has to be executed almost perfectly. So that's the kind of downside. So whenever you don't have any survivability or magic resistance on these um, uh, summons, well, they pretty much take significant more damage from um, any incoming damage, or whether it being, you know, casts or, casts or, you know, auto attacks, just because they don't have hero armor. So obviously they take a lot more damage. So people can obviously uh, life steal a lot more off of summon so i feel like it is counterable i guess quote unquote but it has to be done correctly so you'll see you know uh, red is doing a pretty good job so uh, at doing that correctly at the moment we do have like two summons on the map so people are keeping that in mind that they have to like um obviously counter two summons so i feel like we are pretty much targets at the moment <laughs> so people are going to be kind of like building to counter us all right, so guys, our build is pretty much complete at this point. We have the Sector of the Sea, flat damage from the Horn, um, a lot more health and armor from the Heart and the Lion Horn, and we finally got a lot of damage and attack speed from the Drums and the Skull. So I feel like this is pretty much the final build. I feel like it is pretty much arguably one of the best builds at the moment. You could do some slight modifications, but I feel like overall, for your summoner build, for your tournament um, kind of setting, I feel like this is pretty much the best. So getting through at least three summons, this type of build for late game, uh, and some, you know, obviously some CC, and obviously some good, like, survivability abilities in your arsenal, I feel like usually this will help you quite a bit into the kind of, like, battle, um, battle royale of this map. So I feel like, um, yeah, we just have a just so much for a kit i just i feel like it is so so strong and it's so meta to just go these summons i feel like you'll see uh how strong this is going to be uh for the uh, pvp so obviously it had to be me and zoom um he did beat me in the first uh, pvp that had to take my revenge here. Uh, I mean, the best way for me to uh, kind of do this is kind of overwhelm him with summons. So again, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Summon my first tier units. 
and pretty much hopefully use my Infernal to uh, stun the guy. But as you see, he has a lot of cast. So as I mentioned before, the, the fact that I have a lot of health on my units and a lot of armor and just a lot of resistance, it makes my summons a lot more difficult. So I did get some extra summons from the Scepter of the Sea. You see those mirror imaged um, kind of like purplish um, cool beats, which are kind of like... Um, extra summons that are pretty much from the passive from the scepter. I also did use the spell to prevent Zoom from healing from the, his vine. And you know, this is pretty much like a picture perfect at the moment. Just using my summons, dealing the DPS, always sticking on the hem and just not letting him breathe. So I feel like I almost perfectly played that. Uh, but you definitely can see the power of this uh, summon build. So freaking good. So yeah, even this uh, like Orange guy completely wrecked his agility. For a second there, I thought um, he was going to come back. It is pretty close when you think about it, just because of the light steal, right? This is exactly what I told you about, right? You have Cleave on this, like, Demon Hunter, and he's dealing a lot of damage, a lot a lot of uh, survivability, but he's pretty much wasn't life stealing for a second, and he pretty much was the death of him. So he needed to really aim for the hero, in my opinion, but it is what it is. So then it came down to the caster. So this is a very important PvP. Uh, just because this is going to give me a little bit of information on how to handle this caster. So as you see, Red is going to take a lot of freaking... Look at the help he's getting back from just killing the summons. He's completely annihilating this orange guy. It's absurd. Like, Rain of Fire plus Blizzard on top of the summons gave him just so much damage to for him to heal off. Of those summons and that's how it mask of work uh, mask of death works so pretty much any source of damage that uh this uh red could do he will heal a certain percentage so i think it's 20 percent for casters so i feel like it is absurdly strong for casters so that's why i think for me to take this win is i have to really spread my units in order for me to uh kind of like negate a little bit of his healing right and probably see, see him while he's casting and all that stuff it's something to keep into uh, consideration anyways we have this like reincarnation or like a redemption phase uh, which also is going to be part of the tournament so all of the four people that have not uh won their battles will be put into this arena and one person will come out alive also you have placement points so if you survive a little bit longer than your opponents you will be placed a little bit higher so it's all about staying alive so zoom is kind of struggling here a little bit uh just because of the summon he's kind of getting overwhelmed look at the inner fire on all of those summons that's so freaking difficult to handle i feel like this guy has so much potential like he just needs to kite he could even he didn't use this spell on the murlocs which was a big mistake but look at the absurd amount of units on the map i think he just needed to kite and just gotta be uh, with his summons and kind of use his auto attacks but yeah he has storm bolt he could like keep someone in place and yeah he just died just not being a little bit more proactive and he just didn't have enough health i think so that was his problem so that's why grimoire of souls and like this uh, reinforced hide is pretty good so zoom obviously is not very happy about him getting placed versus me he would have loved to play versus the caster but uh i am definitely the superior caster <laughs> So we're going to be going for the same strategy, just keeping summons, summoning our Infernal um, and uh, Quilby. So it's perfect stun at the beginning and also stunning him with the Infernal and also stunning him with the, uh, what's it called, Storm Bolt. So it was a perfect chain CC, uh, dealing as much damage. And also he's almost like half HP from the start of the, the PvP. So we did apply um, Acid Bomb to reduce his armor and heat pretty much takes um, damage over time. So he's trying to heal up with the with his abilities and trying to cast them on my summons, but it's not gonna work, guys. Just Vimp is just too strong. So good game to Mr. Zoom. He is placed third place, so I feel like it's pretty good for him. Um, obviously, he's a very co good competitor, um, but he just uh, my build was a lot stronger this game. Anyways, so we are pretty much last man standing two v two. These this is pretty much for all all the marbles. The problem is, guys, as you know. The summoner pretty much, this guy, the caster, pretty much wrecked the other summoner. So th there's a lot of pressure. So as you see at the start of the PvP, what I do is I move my summons in different corner positions. Essentially, his casts are not going to be as effective. And I'm essentially jumping on the guy, coming from all angles, and pretty much she's seeing him to the best of my ability. And that's literally how we completely wreck him. I also use this spell, by the way, for soul, soul burn. 
which he did cast, and I feel like that really helped me uh, kind of like regain the my ability. So I feel like I played that literally picture perfect, and I was super happy about my performance. And I hope you guys did learn a lot about summoners in this and what their power is. So I feel like this dispel was pretty much the carry. It was so good. I feel like overall I played this so well and I hope you guys did enjoy this. If you guys like this new type of like uh, recording or kind of like video and want to see more of this type of uh, video, let me know that in the description. Let me know what you guys think about this new style. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh.